Welcome to a new episode of Melt. I'm Ritvika Gupta. As we approach the end of 2021, it's time to take stock of the year going by and list expectations from the coming new year. Hence, Anantranga Swami, editor of Melt, is in conversation today with Sir Martin Sorel, founder and executive chairman, S4 Capital, which is building a new age, purely digital advertising and marketing services business for its clients and millennial-driven influencer brands. Let's get ready to Melt with Sir Martin Sorel. Morning, Sir Martin. Good morning, Anant. We've been, we've been doing our production changes whilst we've been waiting for you. <laughs> We're trying to get everything teed up. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. How, how are things in India, first of all? Uh, let's get the most uh, important thing. I, I think uh, COVID-wise, we are better. While we are hearing of new cases, we're not hearing of hospitalizations. So yeah. uh, it, that, that is a big, big uh, relief to all of us, I think. And, and how's, how are you dealing with the Omicron variants? So let's say what I'm referring to, there's a lot of noise, but if yeah. you look at this, the only test that matters, which is the data, which is yeah. the hospitalizations and, uh, and deaths and so on, uh, we, it's uh, still in uh, low, low th- triple digits across the country, which is... Yeah. Well, it's, 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 we're tempting Providence by talking about it, but it looks as though it's probably more virulent. Yes, probably a, a, attacks younger people more, but maybe is not famous last words. Please God, it's not as lethal uh, as Delta or, 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 or other variants. So I, I think it's going to take uh, some weeks or months to get through, maybe one, one two, three, maybe three months to get through yeah. uh, until we see where, where we are. I mean, I was talking to one of the big tech companies yesterday and, you know, they were going for working from home uh, in January, but they've had to postpone that by at least a month or so. Uh, and I think probably they were being a bit optimistic because I think the uncertainty around Omicron is quite high. Uh, the thing that w- worries me probably, or not worries me, but worries a number of the people that I talk to is with this continuous vaccinations and immunization on a regular basis, what impact does that have? Because we're using a lot of new technologies, the mRNA technology and and others, and we don't quite know what that, apparently, the experts say they don't quite know what the impact is on the immune system of continuous, because this is endemic. It's not a pandemic pandemic. anymore. It's endemic, and we're we're living with it. So anyway, I hope everybody in India uh, is uh, coping with it as well as possible. Uh, it, it's very worrying. Anyway, we're, uh, on, on to brighter stuff, maybe. Yes. So uh, let, let's have your headline thought for 2022 for advertising and marketing. Uh, I, th- I think it's going to be a good year, Alan. I think it's going to be a continuation of the rebound that we saw for the industry as a whole. Uh, but, you know, I focus, as you know, when we ever we talk about these things, uh, we t- focus on the digital part of the industry or the digital industry. And, and there really are two worlds. There's a, an analog world, which is no growth or slow growth. And there's a digital world, which is fast growth. So I think the digital world will continue to expand. We're certainly looking this year, as you know, top line growth has been uh, almost 50%, about 47% for the first nine months of the year. And you'll see where we came out for the fourth quarter in March of next year. And I, we anticipate 25% growth at least, which is where we started this year. We, we took our guidance up to 20, 30, from 25 to 30 to 35 to 40. Uh, and we'll start again <coughs> next year at 25% uh, top line growth. So I, I would say next year is going to be very similar to last year, uh, or sorry, ne- uh, 22, very similar to 21 driven by the fiscal and monetary stimulus. I just want to underline how huge that's been. When when the heads of the holding companies pat themselves on the back and say how well they've done in 2021, you know, up 10%, forgetting, of course, that they were down 10 or even more percent uh, in 20. They've had their worst year ever in 20, uh, and they claim to have had their best year ever in 21. It's just basically the rebound. And when when you look at the forecasts for 21, that's for the year that's just closing from companies such as Group M or Magna, 
they talk about 20% growth for the industry, 10% traditional, 30% digital, but their own companies, their parent companies, WPP or IPG, are only growing at 10%. So the holding companies effectively are losing share if the market is growing at 20%. And I think that's a situation that we'll see again in 22, with GDP growth this year being around 4 to 5%, according to the, the experts. And, and if Omicron has a delaying effect, I think all that does is to push growth from Q1 of next year into Q2, Q3, and Q4. So I don't think it alters the overall position. I, I think the warning bells will start to ring as we get to into the second half of next year. Uh, and general GDP growth will probably in 23 be around 2 or 3%. And that's when I think the rubber hits the road. So all that noise about the recovery in the traditional parts of the industry in 21, and I think which will continue into 22, will evaporate, I think, in 23. The digital industry, I think, will, will, will go you know, serene, serenely on, if that's the right way of putting it, growing again at 15 to 20% next year uh, and, and on into 23. And then the big, you know, there are two tailwinds that have driven our growth, uh, albeit on a small scale. One is GDP growth and the other is digital transformation. The, the tailwind of GDP growth will, will weaken uh, as we end 22, this time next year and into 23. But the digital transformation tailwind will intensify. That will blow harder and harder, uh, particularly as companies come under pressure because of GDP growth slackening. So the, p- the pressure to change, the pressure to digitize companies, to transform companies, uh, in a digital world will intensify as we as we escape 22. Right. So tell me now, imagine you're talking to a room of Indian CEOs. Right. Uh, so uh, you, you've got five minutes to say whatever you want. What, what are you saying? And you can't mention S4 Capital or Media Monks. You can say <laughs> digital. You can use about digital. And, and, and what is the question? I mean, am I, am I talking about the, the world or am I talking about India or am I talking about marketing? Talking about what am India, I doing? You're talking about India and you're talking about the challenges they face and how they will deal with it. Yeah. I, I, listen, I, I, I think that the three areas that, that Indian CEOs uh, and, and trying to get your organization to move in the same direction as you wanted to go, I think is the biggest, the biggest issue for, for anybody, or whatever the size of their company. <clears throat> is and I, <clears throat> I think first of all, um, I, I think you, you have to take back control. I think in a, a digital world, <clears throat> which is as you know, Anna, twenty four seven, always on. <clears throat> Things are coming at you all the time. Things are changing all the time. What happened after the great financial crisis of two thousand eight is it became very fashionable to. Zero-based budgeting became very, very fashionable. That wasn't a new con- concept, but people tried to drive costs out of their organization. And, uh, you know, we have three models. I'm not going to mention S4 Capital but, or Media Monks, but we have S4, three models. We have the traditional outsource model. We have the embedded model where we put our people into clients. And then we have the in-source model, uh, the in-house model, where we're, we're quite willing to do ourselves out of, a client or out of business by if we agree with the client that this is the right sort of situation we, we in-house. So I think the first thing that, that CEOs should be thinking about is taking back control. They devolved a lot of control to their advisors, not just their agencies. And in a 24-7 always on world, you really need to have much more control. So I'm using the line that Dominic Cummings used in the Brexit campaign to take back control, maybe not the way I wanted it to go, but it was a great line uh, in, in a marketing sense. So that's one thing. The second thing is agility. Uh, and I, I think a lot of CEOs talk about their organizations being agile and responsive and quick. When you deal with the organizations, that they aren't that. There is a lot of, obviously, fear of making mistakes inside companies. Agility is absolutely key. Getting everybody to think about the whole organization in a holistic way instead of geographically uh, uh, split up or functionally split up 
is really important. And then uh, at a micro level, uh, maybe a more, more granular level, the third thing I would say to them is the importance of, in a digital world, first party data. I mean, the, 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 the development of client consented data uh, using the databases that clients have, often, you know, they may have grown organically and had different CMOs or CIOs or CTOs put in different systems, or they may have grown by acquisition and they had different systems and you, uniting them together is a difficult thing to do, which, which I accept. But they have to do that and then use that first party data together with the signals to build campaigns in a digital world which are highly personalized using assets at scale and personalizing at scale. So I would say those three, three things, take back control, you have to be agile. And then the last thing is, uh, as I said, at a more granular level, thinking about how you use first party data in a cookie-less world where third party cookies have been banned or mixed by Google principally, and where Apple is insisting on changes to IDFA uh, where, where you can't identify people necessarily as individuals, but as flocks or cohorts. Though that approach demands bringing first party data together with signals. So th- those three things are what I would focus on. You know, take a punt on what's going to happen to all the tech majors. Who, who's the big winner? Who's the big loser of 2022? If you take uh, all the tech majors, uh, not counting China, because we have no connect with China over here. So. Okay, so, well, you know, the six platforms, three of whom are Western, three of whom are Eastern Chinese. But but remember, those Eastern or Chinese platforms, probably they're the the second biggest profit centers or certainly big profit center for the three Western platforms, Google, Facebook, and Amazon, are the outbound Chinese companies. Remember that Chinese companies are, second largest economy in the world are building their positions despite the the regrettable lack of relationship between the US and China you know and the, and the increasing friction there despite that you know outbound chinese is very important but the, the the winners in 22 i think again are going to be the big boys and girls it's going to be google it's going to be facebook it's going to be amazon It's going to be TikTok. I think TikTok is, you know, I I put in the Eastern block, if you like, along with uh, uh, along with uh, Alibaba and Tencent. But really, TikTok is started internationalizing. So it's the only platform to have broken through in that big six, including the Chinese. Just to get the numbers right for a minute, because I think they're very important. Google this year will probably go from about 180 billion of ad revenues to about 215. Uh, Facebook will go, despite the pressure they've been under, from 83 to about 115. And Amazon will go from 25 to 35. So that puts the 32 of TikTok last year, I think, goodness knows what they've done this year, into perspective. And also put it into further perspective, Twitter and Snap are very important, don't get me wrong. They've done very well, but they're only around five and a half billion each. So so in comparison, I mean, they've done very well and they're growing very fast, particularly Snap. And it's highly competitive, uh, not just to, to Facebook, but I guess to TikTok too. But, but in terms of scale, to answer your question, the, 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 the real winners in 22 are going to be those winners, quite apart from you know, the, the continued dominance of Apple, you know, which may hit $3 trillion in terms of market cap. So it's bigger than most nations uh, in terms, if you equate market cap to GDP and Microsoft also around 2 trillion. So, so those are going to continue. And then in the software area, uh, Adobe, Salesforce, Oracle are going to continue to be extremely strong along with you know, companies like IBM and SAP. I, I mentioned Snap and Twitter, Pinterest as well, LG and Samsung. Uh, Epic Games and its Fortnite technology, the Unreal Engine, the gaming technology that we're using in New Delhi globally to to create content from anywhere in the world. I mean, all these all these companies are going to be important. That's why I go through them. But coming back to your question, 
you know, the, the big winners of 21, and they were huge. <clears throat> the delta in digital spending globally in, in 2021 for the three big platforms, so Google, Facebook, Amazon, if you throw in TikTok, it's probably 100 billion. If you take TikTok out, the delta, the increase in ad spending last year, this year, from those three platforms, so the Google, Facebook, and Amazon probably is around 75, 80 billion. And that's uh, out of a total market probably this year, about 700, 70, 50 billion. So take, take the 215 at Google, take the 115 at Facebook, that's 330, add 35 from Amazon, that's 365. Those three platforms have 365 billion out of 700, 750 billion, which is the, for, the forecasters figure for the total ad media market. So they're more than half the market. <clears throat> you know, it's quite extraordinary. The FT I remember, <laughs> expressed surprise at that. I mean, this has been in the, in, the, in the wind for ages. I mean, it's been in the wind for ages that digital was going to be more than 50% of the market. Uh, it's now probably about 55, 60. That, the holding companies are talking about being 65%. I think probably that's a little bit too high. But it will certainly get to 65 and 70 by 2024. So, so digital dominates. You know, the area that we've chosen to stake out dominates and the growth dominates. And go, going into 2022, I don't see it being any different. And Omicron uh, and the fact that it is endemic, uh, sadly, that these, this virus, COVID virus, is endemic. Uh, and has has accelerated the change. It didn't change behaviors. It accelerated the behaviors. Consumers going online, educating online, financial services online, you know, working from home. Uh, media, as you know from your own experience, Anon, accelerated all the trends in media, the, the rise of the streamers, free-to-air free TV coming under pressure, uh, old-style old newspapers and magazines under pressure, the, the rise of digital outdoor and demise of traditional outdoor, that all accelerated. And last but not least, enterprises started to build their digital transformation programs with considerably more speed than they'd done before. So all those trends were accelerated by the pandemic, and, and that's been borne out in 21 and will be continued to be borne out in 22 and beyond. I think employees have more power today. I think employers uh, have less power. I think there, that employees and indeed clients are thinking about what they do, how they do it, where they do it as a result of the pandemic, maybe because they've had more time to reflect. I, I, I say something maybe a bit controversial, but, but I think companies have been better run in the pandemic. You know, they may be more difficult to run, but you know, I think power and responsibility has been thrust downwards inside companies and the center has had less ability to interfere. So I think uh, there's been more authority given to country heads, regional heads, functional heads. And as a result, there's been a sort of delegation of authority, which in a pandemic world um, has, been, has been beneficial for the, the way they run. So <laughs> patterns of behavior are going to change. Right. So tell me, what will it take uh, for Mark Zuckerberg to get you to use Meta instead of Facebook? Because you've said Facebook <laughs> 25 times in this, in the last answer. Well, uh, well, uh, you know, we've been involved. I mean, we've declared interest. We've been involved in that. We've, we're involved in, the, in that launch uh, through FB Connect. I think we've done it for two years. We're working with you know, Roblox and NVIDIA and others, Intel and others, uh, in the, the the metaverse, so, you know, we have a a practice, and we've been hired as sort of agency of record in innovation uh, in the metaverse. Not just metaverse, but I mentioned the Epic Unreal Engine, the technology that we're using, in sort of like the metaverse in a way. But the the metaverse has huge implications for training. Uh, I think see Bill Gates said a couple of days ago that the, the metaverse will be used uh, extensively. Uh, within three years by by workers in, for example, in training programs. So, you know, I've already seen uh, people being trained in the metaverse, you know, pilot training, uh, engineering training, medical operations being uh, 
practiced and conducted uh, through uh, using uh, touch sensory uh, uh, haptic technology to 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 improve uh, obviously the effectiveness of it and uh, implementation of it. So so that that area entertainment. You know we are uh, streaming NBA games on Verizon's 5G network through the metaverse. In the metaverse, you're courtside uh, in the metaverse watching NBA games, pop concerts for, for Pokemon. Uh, and last but not least, e-commerce opportunities. You know, you can, Nike and Adidas, companies like that, can, you know, we can have an avatar of Anant. You know, he can try on, uh, the avatar can try on shoes, try on clothing, order it uh, uh, online. So, I think it is going to change the way we, uh, and then last but not least, it, it impacts working from home. It will make working from home or uh, dispersed working even more effective. So you put all that lot together, you know, this is a really interesting, exciting, uh, innovative area. I mean, there may have been a bit of hype around it, uh, but I wouldn't underestimate its importance. So we'll see it accelerate. Coming back to your questions around 2022, we'll see it accelerate in 2022. But, you know, interestingly, we've been streaming these NBA games for three seasons. This is the third season that we've done this. I think we're up to 26 games this year. Um, and the NBA is a very interesting sports franchise. It's probably the most advanced or one of the most advanced in terms of implementing new technologies uh, in, its, in its franchises. So, so. The metaverse is a, a, a real thing. Uh, I'm sure at Davos in a few weeks' time, there'll be a lot of chat about it. Um, and I, I think maybe there'll be some interesting developments that come next year and beyond. So uh, when is your next visit to India? Well, I, I'd, love to, I'd love to do it, health regulations permitting, as soon as possible. So I'd, I'd love to come in the first quarter of next year. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Martin. It's been it's been too long, Anna. Before yes. I, before I've uh, and you and Piyush and everybody else. So to all the viewers of Weon, uh, a, a very happy new year in for 2022. I, I wish you every success, and hopefully it will not be as turbulent as 21 has been. Certainly from a, a health point of view and a mental welfare point of view, and that we, things will settle down a little bit on that front. Uh, I think 22 will be an exciting year, uh, certainly for our industry, our digital industry and our company as for. But uh, I wish you all, to all my friends uh, in India, uh, I wish you a, a very happy and a, a very successful 2022. And that was Sir Martin Sorrell sharing what the new year holds for the global advertising and marketing industry. He is now presenting the Mel Cheat Sheet. Digital transformation will continue to intensify in 2022. CEOs need to take back control of their organizations. The metaverse will accelerate in 2022 with more opportunities in training, entertainment, e-commerce and remote work prospects. And that's a wrap on this episode of Melt. You can follow us on social media. Our handle is ready to melt. And stay updated with all that's happening in the world of advertising and marketing with our daily Melt update on our website, readytomelt.com. I shall see you next week. Goodbye. <music>